Hey, if you are a singles player transitioning into the world of doubles, then this video is for you because this is five mistakes that singles players make when they play doubles. So if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, so let's get to mistake number one. I wanna let you know, if you've been playing single, most people start out as singles players, so don't feel bad about this. Everybody feels like a fish out of water when they first enter the doubles court. You'd think it'd be easier because you're just covering half the court, but then you realize, oh my gosh, doubles is a different animal, and I'm starting to stand in parts of the court that I'm not very comfortable in starting out a point in, and I don't really know what to do with myself. And you know, it takes a while to get comfortable. Now, one of the obvious things I think almost everybody does, and maybe a little bit of bad coaching goes along with it, I, I'm not sure, but everybody has been taught to guard the alley. Don't get passed down the line. Well, I'm here to tell you what. Guess what? Get passed down the line. Yes, you heard me right. Get passed down the line. I just want to make sure you heard me. Uh, a lot of people, maybe even some, maybe your partner might be a little inexperienced and you get passed down the line. They're thinking, oh, you know, I don't like playing with this player. But here's a lesson that I got from the great Rick Leach, who won nine Grand Slam titles in doubles. We got to interview him. Me and Gigi got to interview him. And his dad was a great coach. And uh, he, he lost a match in doubles. And his dad said, well, well, how many times did you get passed down the line? And Rick probably said, well, I, I barely got passed down the line. He goes, well, see, that's your problem. You're not aggressive enough at the net. You know, you're not making a difference up there. So you got to be willing to take a chance. So let me show you what a lot of people do when they start playing when their partner is serving. Okay, so back there, my partner is serving. I want to do a good job. I want to be a good teammate, and I don't want to get passed down the line. So I wait here. Plus, I don't want to get hit with the ball. So I'm afraid of getting hit with the ball. Let me know, confess, put in the comments below, are you afraid of getting hit by the server? You gotta get rid of that fear. You're not gonna get hit. Maybe you'll get hit once in a while, but it's not gonna happen very often. So a lot of people play here. Now you see this blue line, this is a great way to tell if you are, if you have one of these lines on your court, whether it's pickleball or 10 under line, this is a great way to tell if you're being too careful. Now you think, okay, great, I'm gonna cover this line, awesome. But as far as poaching goes, forget about it. Your job as a poacher is to get to that middle net strap. And if it takes you several steps to get there, there's no way you're gonna be an effective poacher. And so, just like Rick, Rick um, Leach's dad told him, like, look, you gotta be more aggressive. One of the ways you're gonna do that is look at my, look where I'm standing now, okay? That alley looks like it's wide open, but guess what, people, we wanna give them that look. And if they pass it, sometimes that's great. But a lot of times they're gonna take the bait, especially when you start throwing fakes in there. They're gonna take the bait, they're gonna change their mind last second, they're gonna think they're gonna make it down the line, they're gonna miss. Plus, even standing here, you have a pretty good coverage of down the line, believe it or not. So I'm always gonna be moving with the direction of the ball, just kinda moving my shoulders a certain way. So let's say the ball even goes out there, now I can trap, so it's an out wide serve. I can trap the, my opponent by moving this way. Now it gets really easy to poach, see this? I just go one step here, one step there. I make the poach like that. I don't have to be that quick to get to the middle of the net. And then right here, if they're gonna go down the line, I can now use this leg, do a big step across reach. I cover about half the alley with a quick one step and a cross move. And so now I'm giving them about that much to pass me down the line. So if you're a singles player and you're thinking, well, I've heard I've gotta cover my alley, you're not gonna be a factor and your partner's gonna have a really tough time holding serve, and I've been also taught that, hey, if your partner's, unless they're double faulting all the time, but hey, if your partner's having a tough time holding serve, it's not necessarily their fault. Lots of times, it's this person here at the net, it's their fault. So make sure, when you're going out there, that you start to get comfortable right here. And your goal is you're looking for opportunities when you see a weak return come over the middle, don't watch it go by, make a move to the middle right there. You wanna close in, poach, have some fun. Let's get to mistake number two you're making as a singles player on the doubles court. Okay, mistake number two that you're making as a singles player playing doubles, you get used to, I mean, we're just a creature of habit. Everybody's a creature of habit. You're getting used to standing here next to the midline, right? Next to the midline when you're getting ready to serve. Because why? You gotta cover the entire court. 
Okay, you gotta cover the entire court, so it makes sense to stand here. Now, when you're going to play a match in doubles, if you stand here, now all of a sudden you're giving a lot of angle up. People can really get you moving. You're thinking, well, it's, it's not that, that hard. I'm used to covering the whole court. Now I gotta cover half the court. So you're staying here, but you're not realizing how much that opponent, if they're good, can take you off the court because now they also can use the alley and they can they have more angle to work with. So you could serve and they could potentially hit a nice short angle return and you would have to go, and I might not even be on camera anymore, you would have to come way out here just to make a shot. So now even if you get there, even if you get there, now you've opened up the court for your competition and they can put the ball away right down the middle of the court right here and you're in trouble. Okay, so to take those angles away, what you want to do is you want to stand right about here. So you can basically come to the single sideline, take like one, two steps in. This is pretty good. Now you should be able to still hit pretty much every spot in the box and get your split step down if you're staying back or when you RV serve and volley. Now you can cover pretty much the entire, it gets a lot easier because very few balls are going to come right here. There's going to be a couple balls that are going to come here, but remember your partner should get a lot of these balls, okay? So you don't have to worry about many of these. So not many balls are going to come here. The majority of your play is going to be from here to here, and then if you got a good opponent, and occasionally they're going to get you out there in the green. But you can cover a lot of what you're responsible for. Plus, like as a lefty here serving to the uh, do side, I can take a cheat over step, and now if I want to hit mostly forehands, I can hit mostly forehands, inside out forehands. So it's a great, great way to play your favorite shots. Also, it's a really good way to see if I serve in volley. If I stand here, if I serve in volley, now I got to be moving out this way to make that volley. If I'm going to serve in volley here, it's a much easier progression to the net and to get my volley and to cover all the angles. So make sure that you get comfortable standing to the outside. One little caveat to that is you can also do what I call line sliding. If your opponents, if you notice that they're hitting returns in certain areas of the court and you want to basically counteract that, you can do line sliding. It's okay to decide that, you know what? I serve much better, I want to serve that ball down the middle, it's tough for me to serve the, the ball down the middle from here, and they're not really taking advantage of this. I'm going to stand more close to the middle and anticipate the return being late and just get on my horse a little bit. You can do that as well, but I would go to the middle occasionally, but I think every doubles player should be comfortable standing close to the single sideline when they serve, and then you can plan from there and you can move up and down the line depending on what you and your partner want to do together. So that's mistake number two. So make sure you get comfortable staying out there. If you've never served out there, it might be a good time, you know, let's say you got a match this weekend, Wednesday, Thursday, practice baskets of balls serving out there if you never have because what you're going to find is now all of a sudden there's a world of angles given to you that you've never had before when you serve, but there's also going to be some angles and some options taken away or limited by moving out there and you want to know what you can and can't do from that position of the court so you can plan accordingly in your match. All right, let's get to mistake number three. Hey, if you've enjoyed these first two tips and you're looking forward to the next three, then what I want you to do right now is I want you to smash the like button. When you smash the like button, my buddy B2 is gonna give you a hundred puppy kisses. People start to miss the puppy kisses and now what I'm doing is I'm bringing the puppy kisses back to you. So when you like this video, you get 100 puppy kisses from B2. All right, let's get to our next tip. Okay, mistake number three that singles players make on the doubles court, especially this become a trend in singles lately. Uh, you're seeing Rafael Nadal stand way, way back here to return serve. You're seeing Medvedev stand way back by the fence. So players to give themselves more time to get returns in, in, in singles, they're moving back and most people are not serving volleying on you. So it's okay when you move back and you can hit the ball high over the net. 
by giving that ball higher than that, it gives you more time to get into the point, make some returns, return some big serves. Now, in doubles, it can kill you because now you're staying way back here. This is doing a couple of things by staying way back here. Number one, if you're playing a, a team that has an aggressive poacher, when you're staying here and hitting it, it gives them all day to see your return and then cross over and poach the ball on you. That's number one. Number two, by staying way back there, if you're playing somebody that likes to serve and volley and they're good at it, especially for, for some, especially it's gonna be uh, for the 4-0, four or five players out there, but you're a singles player, you're staying way back there. I've seen people who have awesome ground strokes, way better than their opponents, but their opponents are really good doubles players and they serve and volley and they just eat this person for lunch, right? Because now you're gonna be hitting that return way back there. The person's gonna serve and volley. They're gonna get high volleys. They're gonna crunch your, your partner. They're also going to maybe hit drop shots against you when they hit their volley, like nice little cutting shots and you're not gonna be able to get there. You're barely gonna get there and then they're gonna put the next ball away. So make sure that you get comfortable standing closer to return. This is gonna give the poacher less time to move. The serve and volley, now you can get more returns at their feet because you're taking time away. And then you can kind of play around, okay? There's gonna be certain teams that you play in doubles that if you stand back, they're not aggressive poachers. They're not gonna hurt you. Or maybe they don't serve in volley or they miss a lot of volleys, right? So I think okay, to move back occasionally. I mean, sometimes even in doubles, I'll slide way, way back because I want to get a ball back in play or I know they're not poaching. I just want to give a different look. So I'm not saying never stand way back in doubles. You can, but if you're doing it over and over again, especially you know you're getting picked on, have alarm bells go off. It's not working. You got to change your court position. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. Wrong. Okay, so that's it. Let's go to tip number four. Hopefully you're starting to really learn. Like, oh, I think I'm starting to understand this doubles game a little bit. Okay, mistake number four. Singles players and doubles players guilty of this, but singles players a little more, especially because a lot of singles players, you got really big weapons and you want to use those weapons and nothing feels better than lacing an up the line winner. And again, I'm not saying don't hit up the line in doubles. You can hit up the line. You can hit a great passing shot. You do want to keep your opponents honest, especially if you're playing somebody who really likes to poach. You know, test them, go up the line on some returns and some passing shots. But so many players fall in love with the up the line passing shot, all right? And what I like to do is demo like, because it feels good to crush one. I'm just gonna kind of swing. I'm gonna try and make them swing really fast and aggressive because there's obviously there's no pressure on me right now other than the camera. And let's see how many I make me swinging as fast as I can. That kind of like, I guess makes it a little bit realistic as according, because now you're gonna have a server, you're gonna have the person at the net, so you have some pressure. And how many times realistically, when you go up the line aggressively, are you gonna make that shot out of 10? See, look. That one would have been great if it didn't hit the net, but now all of a sudden it popped up at the net. Now that opponent could just put that ball away, so I probably would have lost that point. Let me go again. Bam, okay. I made that one. All right, so now I, I made one. I'm super excited. Let me try it again. Oh, I hit the net again. Do you see where I'm going with this? It's like that one shot you made can be super addictive, but then if you're really keeping score, you realize, oh, I had like three passing shots and I lost like seven. <laughs> <laughs> so I made, you know, I won three out of ten when I went up the line. Uh, and, and also when you go up the line, now it leaves, if they have a good volley, now it leaves this middle. If they can volley through the middle, they have a really good look at putting the ball away on you. So um, make sure that you go up the line to keep them honest. Try and keep score in your head. And, and really, when you start to get way down in the count, you got to go, okay, what's the, smartest re what's the smartest reply in doubles? Go cross court. If you can be a solid cross court return person, right, just doing that all day long, everybody will want to play with you. Everybody will want to play with you. And if you're playing a certain buyer, then your job is to do that same return but get it at their feet. So if you can do those two returns, they stay back, if you can get a nice deep return going, cross court, you're gonna be nails in doubles. They, they start to serve by on you, you learn how to modify it and get that return low and at their feet cross court, nails, okay? You, you occasionally hit nice down the line winners, 
your partner is going to be so frustrated with you. They're going to be like, I played with a knucklehead today. All they try and do is hit downline winners. They think they're amazing when they make it, but they don't realize how much they're missing. Don't be that guy or that girl. All right, let's get to tip number five. Okay, tip number five, this is probably what singles players are most guilty for. You play hero ball and you drive your partner crazy. You think you're a much better player because you have better technique maybe on your ground strokes especially. Maybe you have a bigger serve than your partner. And so you want to use these weapons and try and win the match on your own, but you're making it really hard for your partner to know where to move. And so you're just randomly hitting a cross court ball, down the line ball, cross court ball, down the line ball, little angle shot. Uh, but uh, Roy Emerson, who I got to interview, maybe said it best. The legend Roy Emerson. He said, you play for your partner. What that means is you make your shot selection so you're, you make the game easier on your partner. That's a sign of a good doubles player. So here I am, I'm at the net. You're the singles player back there hitting shots. And let's say this is how you play. You hit one shot, cross court to the corner. So I'm gonna shade there and cover that. Then your next ball, you go at the net person. Now I'm gonna be like moving like this to try and guard that. Then you go back over there. Now I'm moving over there. Now you hit a lob down. So now I'm moving all over the place, having to readjust and half the time, I mean, first of all, your, your doubles partner most of the time is not gonna be making that quick an adjustment. They're not gonna be moving at the time they need to and they're gonna be leaving holes open. It's much easier if you, if you just think about playing one direction so you create a weakness, then attack the other one when it makes sense. Then it's a lot easier for your partner to be closing and cornering people. So a better point would look more like this. You know, they're, they're here, they're seeing you hit cross court, you're in this cross court rally, they're looking for any sign of weakness, they see you hit a great cross court shot, they see their, that, that opponent off balance, and then boom, they just poach and end the point. That's how ideally you want to play for your, your doubles partner. You're playing a point, again it's cross court, cross court, they feed you a short ball, you come on in, then you pound a volley at the net person in front of you, right? You hit a great cross court short approach shot, you come to the net, you get a high volley, then you attack the net person in front of you, now your partner corners that net person with you, the ball comes back to your partner, boom, your partner puts the ball away, they feel like a hero, but guess what, you set all that up and they didn't have to do a bunch of thinking and readjusting, repositioning. The less you make your partner re reposition, readjust, you're a better doubles player. They're having to be in a mad scramble from shot to shot and they have no idea where you're gonna hit each ball because you're like the hero and you're making all these amazing shots. You're probably not as good a doubles player as you think you are. So hopefully these five mistakes really helped you get on your way in your doubles game. I also have a great no fail poach lesson I want to give you right now and I made this incredible course called Next Level Doubles. So if you want to get your doubles to the next level, whether you are a doubles player or whether you're getting more into doubles, then definitely take advantage of this free video that is up here in the card section and down in the description. And if you want unlimited, unlimited puppy kisses I'm offering right now, that's how important your support is to me, then subscribe to this channel so you don't miss my next video. This is Pete from Crunch Time Coaching. We'll see you on the next video.